Peace and blessings, peace and blessings, everybody out there on um, POET Radio and Truth Our Land. Uh, we want to say peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Uh, we love you, brothers and sisters, and we are here for you. And um, you are on another edition of Reboot Your Faith, okay? Reboot Your Faith. This is episode three, and we have a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, subject that we are going to deal with today. And this is a subject that most of us have dealt with, being those of us who are in the truth. Um, Sister Diane Stansberry, please let us know where you are watching from. Peace and blessings. And those who are tuning in, please let us know where you are watching from. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, we got Sister Sabrina from Brandon, Florida, who's tuned in. Um, Team Truth Hour um, and our host, please go to Facebook Live right now and begin to share this live feed before I bring you on, host. You got probably about another minute or so before I bring you on. So please, um, at this moment or at this time, share the lesson. Uh, Sister Key Israel, let us know where you're checking from. John, uh, um, um, new Brother Duca, I, I believe it's the inner silent. Let me know. Please let us know where you're tuning in from. Brother Rory Potts, peace and blessings. Brother Adrian Mason is tuning in from Dallas, Texas. I want to say peace and blessings to you. Start your watch parties right now. We're going to deal with a powerful lesson. And um, that lesson today, brothers and sisters, is dealing with family members and friends who are not in the truth. How do we deal with them? Do you have a husband or wife that's not in the truth? How do you deal with that? Do you have a sister or brother or mother or father that's not in the truth? How do you deal with that? How, how do you deal with them when it comes to the holidays or the holiday season? Uh, sister Diane is tuning in from Riverdale, Illinois. Sister Brenda is tuning in from Dallas, Texas. Uh, let's see. Sister Mona, let us know where you're tuning in from. Happy Sabbath. Uh, sister Laura, uh, Southwest Indiana. Brother Jordan, uh, let me see. I want to say peace and blessings to each and every one of you all. Sister Margaret Cobb, still praying for you, my sister. Uh, she's tuning in from Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about how we deal with, how do we deal with family members and friends and co-workers who are not in the truth? That's what we're going to deal with today. Um, all of us have dealt with this. All of us have experienced this, and many of us don't know how to deal with it. We get in arguments, we fall out with one another, um, but um, on this show, we're going to provide some, some solutions on how to deal with this, brothers and sisters, because again, um, we all have dealt with this before. Many of us are dealing with it right now. We're going to go to our host in a moment, and... Um, going to bring our beautiful host on, um, Sister Savannah, Sister Crystal, and Brother Bakersman. We're going to bring our host on in a moment, and we are going to deal with this subject today on this Sabbath day on Reboot Your Faith. We're going to deal with that, brothers and sisters. So at this time, please share, please share, please share. And uh, we're doing the same thing that we are um, asking you to do. And again, today we're dealing with how do you deal with family members and friends and loved ones who are not in the truth? How do you deal with that? Brother Ray, let everybody know where you're tuning in from. We got Brother Isaac tuning in from Fort Campbell, New York. We got, uh, let's see, um, Ariane tuning in from Louisiana. Brother Jordan Stubbs from Arkansas. Um, yes, please, brothers and sisters. Uh, um, please share, please um, start your watch parties, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and bring on our host. Let's see. Let's go ahead and bring on our host. Uh, let's see if we got, let us know, let me know too in the inbox, guys, if we got Sister um, Crystal on. All right. So now we got to go ahead and um, bring on our host. Let's see. We got Sister Savannah. Um let everybody know uh, where you are tuning in from, um, a little bit about yourself, and um, 
why it's so important to discuss this subject today on how to deal with family members and friends who are not in the truth. Um, I am part of I am part of Teen Truth Hour with Sister Savannah. Um, so the reason that it is important that we discuss this topic today is because those that are in the truth, um, we're walking this truth, we're living this truth, we're constantly surrounded with people that are not in the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and it either might be a partner, it might be your kids, it might be your family members. But they're very close to you, and um, we just have to always keep in mind that they're not in the truth and that they're watching us, but we want to try to bring them to the truth. So mm -hmm. we have to figure out ways to talk to them or get them to hear the word. So it's just a good topic to, to talk about today and, and always because we're surrounded by people every day that are not in the truth. Absolutely, and, you know, it's crazy because my mom is a Jehovah Witness, and, you know, they call what they believe the truth and it was many a times when the jehovah witnesses didn't socialize with people who were not jehovah's witnesses now we don't prescribe to that same type of ideology because that's not what the bible um, um prescribes for us to do as christians or followers of jesus or followers of christ or studier of this word called the bible but at the same time you still have to deal with family members. You still have to, you don't write your family members off because they don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob or the words that are written in this book called the Bible. So again, this show is going to be dedicated as to how you carry yourself and how you deal with your family member. Like my mom. How do I deal with my mom? And my mom is a Jehovah Witness. But we talk every day on the phone and we pull out the Bible and we read the Bible and we discuss the Bible every day that we talk. How do I deal with my mom? Who, you know, who many things we don't see um, eye to eye on as far as it relates to scriptures. And a lot of things we do. You know, how do you stand firm in your faith? So let's go ahead and bring on Brother Bakersman. Brother Bakersman. Um, uh, make sure you stay in tune with the inbox also, guys. we got to communicate in that inbox during the show. Brother Bakersman, uh, let everybody know who you are, where you're from, and why it's important to deal with this subject today on Reboot Your Faith. How you doing, Brother Bakersman? Uh, calling in from Houston, Texas. And uh, I feel like it's definitely, to, uh, definitely important to speak on this topic uh, for the main reason uh, when you do get into this truth and uh, you wake up the first place it's going to hit is uh, from within the family because mm. the Most High said in the scriptures that he came to bring a sword mm -hmm. and that sword is the word which will bring the vision mm -hmm. those that will those that are willing to deal with him and those that are willing that are not willing to deal with him so it's always going to start from within the family first, and it's going to be a very a very trying time if you're by yourself. You know, if you're living in the house with your mom, your dad, your brother, and your sister, and you might be the only one that's dealing with the truth and actually trying to keep the Sabbath day, not deal with those pagan holidays. It's going to be really tough on you because they're not going to see it the way it's written. Right. They're going to go out for what? We've all been taught over the years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I feel like this this uh, subject is very very important that we uh, touch on because, like I always say, we're all in this in this thing together and we all deal with some of the same things on a daily basis. Man, that's that's you know that's uh, couldn't have said any more truer words than that, uh, my brother, and we definitely appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead over and make sure we got. Um, Sister Crystal on the line also as well. So uh, let's see. Let's. Uh, did you guys put your phone numbers inside the inbox so I can recognize um, your number on the board? Let's see. Want to get Sister Crystal on the line? Let's see if this is her. Seven seven three nine eight six. Who's this? State your name. Where you calling from? 
Hey, Sister Chantel, give me one moment. Let me see if I can get um, Sister Crystal on our, our third host um, real quick. On um, Sister Savannah, is she on with you? Okay, Sister Crystal, the question is on the table, um, how do we, you know, why is this subject today so important? But first of all, introduce yourself and um, tell, let the people know where you're from. And then um, why is this so important to, to deal with this subject today? Um, how to deal with family members and friends who are not in the truth. Go ahead. I appreciate that, my sister. So again, ladies and gentlemen, those who are just tuned in, you're tuned in to Reboot Your Faith. This is our third episode. We come on on the Sabbath day at four o'clock. And the opposite of this Sabbath day, we have the youth host that come on, our 20-year-olds. Um, and that show is called What's the Real Deal Israel? So every Sabbath day at four o'clock p.m., um, you get the um the either reboot your faith or what's the real deal israel so let's go ahead and go to our phone line we do want to hear from you <clears throat> if you look in the comment section the phone number is there for you to call in and that number is 605-562-0444 and the id code is 93155 pound and then the pen is one and again that number is already in the comment sections right there. So look in the comment section. We want to hear from you. But let's go ahead and go to our first caller. We brought this sister on um, a moment ago. We're going to go to her first. Um, sister, um, let us know who you are and where you're calling from. 773-986. Hey, Sister Chantel from Chicago. How you doing? Happy Sabbath. Great. Happy Sabbath to you also. That's good. That's good. Um, so give us your thoughts on this topic today. How do you deal with family members and friends who are not in the truth? Um, you're in the truth and you're trying to get them to know Jesus for themselves. And maybe that the version that they have of Jesus or the version that they have of God is different from the version that's written in the book between Genesis and Revelation. Just give us your feedback on this. Or you may have a personal story. Yes, I do have a personal story because um, very deep into the whole um, Egyptian thing. And mm. that's what I've heard a lot in the um, African-American community right. because a lot of people say that our history was taken from us and we're not aware of it. So 
they feel like once they become aware, they become empowered through it. And they have all these, um, I guess, stories of how um, Christianity was beat into um, our people and they're not going to believe in some blue-eyed white Jesus. So I've, I've gotten to very heated debates with people, and I find that sometimes I just stray away from it. And if, you know, um, I am, what is it, moved to say something, I say something, but for the most part, I like to listen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it can get very heated at times where I just, you know, just step back away from it and... But I just feel something in my spirit that, you know, um, I feel wrong for stepping back, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. Right. But, you know, I'm I'm glad that you called in because, see, this is what we want to give the answers to today. You know, Um, I want you to um, go to your Bible real quick and turn to Psalms 105. And while you're getting your Bible and you're turning to Psalms 105, even if you, um, you know, go to your phone and your Google search engine and type type this in Psalms 105, I want to show you something in that. Um, I deal with a lot of Egyptologists also as well. And I deal with a lot of atheists, people who say, well, man, I don't believe in God. And and why would he put us through slavery? And why do you see these are the questions that you have to have the answers to when you are dealing with people who have fallen away from the faith because of the way they've seen some people who call themselves Christians act. Now, remember, the slave masters call themselves Christians. So anything dealing with Christianity, sometimes with some black people, at least, it takes them back to the oppressor, you know. And so we go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, when we start talking about the transatlantic slave trade and how we got to be in the condition that we're in, Deuteronomy 28 chapter, you can always use that. But I want to talk about Egypt for a moment. Egypt was one of the greatest civilizations on record that have ever existed. And God had intimate dealings with Egypt all throughout the Bible. Um, The Israelites was there under Moses. The, The Israelites was there under Joseph. Um, Jesus went into um, uh, Egypt also as well. But how did the Egyptians become so great in the knowledge that they had? And remember, they were already a a great civilization, but, uh, or, 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 you know, a promising uh, civilization, but they became a great civilization. But um, let me know when you get to Psalms 105. 105 verse 8? No, uh, Let's deal with um, 105, go down, and we're going to start at verse 17. And the reason why I'm showing you this, because I want to show you who taught the Egyptians the wisdom that they had, okay? And it was an Israelite that taught the Egyptians the wisdom that they had. So go ahead, read a verse 17, and we're going to read down. Go ahead. He sent the man before them. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. I'm going to stop you right there. Now, Joseph was a was the dream interpreter who told the Pharaoh that you're going to have seven years of famine and then you're going to have seven years of plenty, if you're familiar with that story. And because Joseph saved Egypt, Pharaoh said, I'm going to make you the second in command only under myself. And let's see what else happened with Joseph. Go ahead. Keep reading at verse 18. Whose feet they hurt. With, le- with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Mm-hmm. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his sons. So that's when Joseph had the interpreted the dream. That's when Joseph had to interpreted the dream. And now... Here it is. The Pharaoh made him Lord of his house and ruler over all his substance. But now, how did the senators of Egypt get their wisdom? How did the ruling factions and the political people who made the decisions get their wisdom? Go to verse 22 and read that. To bind them with 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 21 and 22. Go ahead. He made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. So the wisdom that the Egyptians had came from an Israelite, the chosen people of God. And that's why we believe in this Bible so much. And that's why our faith is so strong. And that's why all roads lead back to Israel. All roads lead, lead back to Jesus, no matter whether you want to call him Yahshua or, or, or any variation of the Hebrew names of God, um, of Jesus or whatever. You know, and so we stand on this faith. But again, we understand why our people are the way that they are. Because so many false prophets and false teachers have come throughout our history and through the annals of history that it has turned many of our people off. So to you, Sister Chantel, and to those who are out there, um, I just say be patient and be kind. Let people see the God in you based on your walk and the way you carry yourself and the way you do things. But also be ready with this word of God, even if you ain't got the answer. Seek somebody else who got the answer so that you, they can give it to you and you can give it to that person. Okay. All right. So I want you to hold on the line and uh, I definitely thank you for calling. But um, we're going to um, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some other people who have the same type of issues and the questions that you have that, um, you know, that's going to be answered in that question, too. All right. Okay, cool. Let me go to Sister Savannah. Sister Savannah, what did you think about what that sister just spoke about? How there are Egyptologists and people who don't believe in Christianity or or the word of God today because of what those who came in the name of Christianity has done to our people? Uh, I think that's a major issue in Israel as well as in, with the rest of the nations as well. Um, I think that our people are just destroyed, as the book says, mm -hmm. in that they just turn to any other realm of religion and they mm -hmm. lean to it. And I don't know, I just think that a lot of our, I think a lot of Israel just, they just rely on Egyptology and they shouldn't. Um, if they read the book, they'll realize that the Egyptians were our first slave masters. So I don't know, I just think that that's just a major problem that we have in Israel that needs to be corrected. And it can only be corrected if we just start guiding our people and teaching our people the truth in the word of God. All right. Let's go to 708-654. 708-654. State your name and let us know where you're from. Hi, this uh Chi Chi. <laughs> hey, Sister Chi Chi, how you doing? Uh, you know what? All right, and you? I'm all right. Let the people know where you're calling from. I'm calling from Linwood, and I'm a member of Poor People of Extraordinary Talent. Okay, and that's Linwood, Illinois. So the, the the topic on the table is how do you deal with family members and friends who are not in the truth? Um, how do you how do you carry on the relationship and deal with those people? Um, maybe they celebrate holidays and things that you don't celebrate. Maybe they believe in things that are not founded in the Bible, but argue you up and down when y'all have those conversations. How do you, how do you deal with that? You know what? I really don't have those problems. Okay. Because everybody, mostly in my family and friends and relatives that I have, they do, they Christianity, believe in God, you know, right. go to church with most all my around. Mm -hmm. So I don't have that issue. Okay. Okay. So um, what what advice would you give to those who do have that issue? Maybe they believe and their husband don't believe, or maybe they believe and their wife don't believe, and they got a household that believe in Jesus and, and believe in the things that are written in this Bible, and they don't. What, how, how, what advice would you give to them as to how to deal with that type of situation? Well, one thing, like, like you and I both know, they need to uh, read the Bible mm -hmm. and, I don't know. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay. Come back to me. Let me think about it. Yeah, it's okay because we're going to have some other people on the line also as well that's going to make some comments and they may give you some clarity on that particular um, subject also as well. But I thank you for calling in and supporting the show also as well. Hang on the line, all right? Okay. All right. That was Chi Chi from Linwood, Illinois. Let's go ahead and um, go to the next caller. We got 77. Uh, who do we have? Um, 318-407, and please, guys, do call in, 318-407, state your name, and where you're calling from. 318-407. Okay, um, I, I don't know what's going on with your phone. Maybe you're watching Facebook Live while you're on the line also as well. So please um, turn down the volume on your on your um, Facebook Live. And let me go to you again, try to go to you again. Um, 318-407. 318-407, st state your name. Okay, let's go to 708-733. I believe I know who this is. My brother, my mentor, 708-733. State your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Brother Julius from the Israel of God Bible Study Camp, Riverdale, Illinois. Okay. I want to say grace and peace to everybody. Happy Sabbath day. And um, uh, first time caller. I want mm -hmm. to thank Black Eyes for the invite. Yes. Oh, man, uh, it's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be here today. Just just chimed in and just listening. Yes, sir. Well, we know, brother, um, that you are recovering from the coronavirus, COVID-19, you and your daughter. Uh, let everybody know how things are going on with you and your daughter. I want to say, first of all, uh, those who know me, uh, thank everybody for their prayers and uh, concerns. We are recovering well. We'll continue to the stay therapy. Uh, still have the sweats, uh, the the night sweats. The um, uh, 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 we don't have any body aches. Uh, it's the fevers mm -hmm. and the night sweats, and and uh, my uh, our 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 uh, our wind is coming back. Mm -hmm. Our wind is coming back, and uh, uh, it just shows you the healing power of the God of Israel when you cry out to Him, and it just gives you a sense of mortality. Uh, recovering uh, good, feeling good right now. Um, uh, uh, I just want to let let people know, anybody who contracts the coronavirus, virus, do not allow this virus to affect your mind to the point where you are so fearful that anxiety enters in, because it can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I never thought I would be having hallucinations, but... Uh, uh, the sense of hopelessness and despair. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're not strong enough in the Lord, um, Satan will take you out of here through uh, fear, mm -hmm. drugs, alcoholism, and then potential thoughts of suicide because this is serious. People are actually dying from this. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is merciful, and I thank you for uh, um, his grace and mercy that he's bestowed upon myself and my daughter and all who are recovering. Yes. Yes, we appreciate that, brother. And again, we are praying for you also as well. Um, let's go to um, the question, brother, and the topic. You've been in this truth for a long time, and you've seen it, probably experienced it also as well. Um, and here it is. How do you deal with family members and friends who are not in, who are not in the truth, loved ones who are not in the truth? And you are, but you have to, you know, live with them. You have to work with them. Sometimes they celebrate holidays that you don't celebrate. Um, you know, sometimes when you go over their house and they ask you to pray over the food, but you know they got pork on the table and catfish on the table. You know, I hear uh, Brother Boo and you talk, well, me and you, we deal with that all the time at work. You know, well, um, Brother uh, Black Eyes, pray, can you pray over the food? And there's, you know, ham and, 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 um, and, and pork chops and catfish on the table. So how, how, how do we deal with those um, issues, those type of things, Brother Julius? First of all, uh, uh, if the first scripture that comes to my mind is what Paul said. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Paul said, be all things to all people. And be respectful and mindful that the things that we, and the knowledge that we have acquired, the people just don't know. The first thing I, that I found out is that our people don't, first of all, they do not know who they really are. Mm-hmm. Because we have been called uh, the only nation of people that that's named after a whole continent. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, uh, people don't understand uh, when the people said that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, that is a statement. That, I mean, it is a real statement. Uh, we don't know who we are. We, we've been called this title, but the Lord called it over the Deuteronomy 28 chapter. So the first thing that I do, I introduce people to Deuteronomy 28 chapter to identify the only people in the world that fits this criteria. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, uh, I, 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 like you said, we deal with it every day on the job with family and friends. I want to be respectful to any and everybody because my job as a watchman and as a warner and as a minister and an ambassador for Christ is to win souls and not drive people away. That takes temperance. That takes self-control. That takes long-suffering. That takes experience, Mm -hmm. you know, and and the understanding of the Word of God because uh, this is why Jesus on the uh, cross said, for the Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So, him being our Lord and Captain and Savior, and I'm the Captain of our salvation, we have to, uh, we have to uh, 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 attack things the way that He do it in the spirit of meekness, in the spirit of love. And say, hey, what I like to do, I, my favorite four words is, read it to me. Mm-hmm. If you're going to profess a religion, a faith, an idea, it's got to be written. And then I want you to read it to me. If you go to church on Sunday, let's look up the definition of Sunday. Basic stuff that people can do that they can look at themselves. And if you approach them with the right mindset and and, and meet them where they are, not in the sense of belittling, but meet them where they are, Ice, and uh, make them question themselves. Mm -hmm. Why do you go to church on Sunday? Did you know that God has a dietary law? Did you know that he has feast days that man does not even observe? Mm -hmm. Do you know what the definition of a Bible Christian is? Mm -hmm. So these are things that when I introduce myself to people or first time and family members, and then whether they were here or whether they were forbear, I say, well, I hope you find what you're looking for. But my favorite four words is read it to me. And my other three words, book, chapter, and verse. Hmm. And I found it I found it to be very effective. At the same time, if they don't want to accept it, I have to love them. And sometimes you have to love them from a distance. Hmm. Because this truth is going to separate you. A man's enemy shall be those of his own house. A man's enemy shall be those of his own household. A man's enemy shall be those of his own church. So, hey, uh... Uh, Jesus told you it is necessary that offenses must come. So therefore, um, that's my approach on it and understanding that you have to be patient with people because, and, and, and like, like I said, let them see your walk. Let them see your humility. Let them see your, uh, um, the spirit of God. Don't retaliate with harshness. The books are a kind word to their way back. So we have to meet people in the spirit of love with the fruits of the spirit as opposed to our uh, flesh and blood mind. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Julius. Um, And for those who tuned in, you're tuned in to um, Reboot Your Faith. Um, here on POET Radio um, with host Sister Savannah, Brother Bakersman, and Sister Crystal, and of course, um, your brother Black Ice. Our topic today is how do you deal with people, loved ones, family members, friends who um, are, are not in the truth or who are non believers? How do you deal with them? How do you um, carry yourself? How do you uh, interact with them? Um, Sister Crystal, uh, I just want you to to reply to Julius's, Brother Julius's comment before we go into the host comments. Uh, I do want you to reply to Brother Julius, though, before that. Uh, Sister Crystal. Okay. Um, really? <laughs> Brother Julius said it all. Um, <laughs> I mean, he, 
he, he touched bases on everything that I might would want to say, but um, I agree with him 100% because, you know, we can't just go and out and, and judge people. That's mm-hmm. the main thing. We can't judge people. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're going to judge people, we have to judge righteously. Uh, you know, judge them righteously, and, you know, you can tell them about things, but do it the right way. That's Don't right. just say, well, you know, I can't deal with you. Uh, we can't hang out. We can't do this. Now, we do have to separate ourselves sometimes from people. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that you don't love that person or that you are uh, just, you know, closing the door on them because these are people we are trying to win to Christ. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we just have to know uh, the things to say to them, how to say it to them. And, you know, we have to, like I said earlier, and like he said, uh, you have to meet people where they are. Because so, everybody is not on the same page. And they're not just going to be uh, doing things differently. They're being taught differently than what we are. And, you know, we was in the place that they were. And, you know, we just have to try to bring the truth to them. And by doing that, you can, you know, interact with them, you know, give them scriptures, uh, give them videos to watch or whatever like that. And, you know, mm-hmm. don't just try to crowd them. Mm-hmm. And push it on them. You can't push this truth on people. That's right. Because, you know, you're going to lose them. Mm-hmm. You're going to lose them. So what you need to do is just, hey, you know, I've got a scripture here. I wanna, mm-hmm. You know, I want to send to you or I have a video I'd like for you to watch. Right. And, you know, if you see something or hear something that's different than what you've been taught in church, you know, give me a holler. Mm-hmm. Give me a call and let's talk about it. Or something like that. You don't just, right. oh, well, you know, your pastor, you can't start out like that. That's You're right. going to lose them immediately. So That's we true. have to know how to approach a person. And if they co- approach you, then, you know, you just have to always start out with the milk first. Because mm-hmm. people have approached me all the time with meat. Right. Okay, so it, 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 if you're going to come to me with meat, I'm going to have to guide you just like a child. Learning how to ride a bike, you're going to have to step to that. You just don't put them on there and say, go. You right. know, you have to step, okay, you got to do this, you got to do that. Take them back to the mill. Give them the things that they can understand. Mm-hmm. And, and like, first thing, they need to know who they are. That's right. And we need to take that to them first. They'll let them find out who they are and go from there. Because this is not an easy walk. That's right. It's not, and, you know, we're just going to have to be patient with the people and, you know, and just love on them and just let them know that they are not alone. We were in the same spot. You know, I believe the same thing that you did a long time ago and until somebody brought the truth to me. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, I just agree with him on everything that he says, and, you know, it makes sense to me, and the simplicity in Christ. It's supposed to be simple. That's and true. so, you know, lo- don't let us make it hard for someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just need to bring it to them and let it be simple and then go from there. And I'm sure if you do it that way, then, you know, someone is going to want to know more about the God that you serve. But you first have to present that God to them in the right way. And that's I, my I, take on what I agree with Julius that. Said. I agree with that 100% uh, and 10%. Sister Tay Wells said, my sister Key Israel used to call me at uh, at the time and try to talk to me about the truth, and I would hang up <laughs> on her all the time. I honestly thought she was crazy or in a cult until one day I took the time to listen to her, and I am forever grateful because now I understand. Uh, Moss, um, I believe Sister Moss said, I have... Drop seed on most of my family and they all have refused one way or another. So I distance myself. However, I feel bad. And that's what we want to talk about, Sister Moss, because there's no need to distance yourself. Uh, We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Let's see. Sister Latrice says, my goddaughter um, thought I was crazy also, but now she is in the truth. But um, none of my family or friends are. But I give... Um, that word every time they do listen, I pray God give them 
um, the increase. Let's see who else. Uh, Brother Adrian said, I remember trying to talk to my mom about um, the going to heaven doctrine. And all that I was trying to do is shed some light on the on the matter, wanting her to know that it was a doctrine of man and not of God. Uh, let me see if I can finish that out. So what I did, I gave her scriptures, hoping that she read them. But um, all we can do is plant the seed and leave them in God's hands and, and let him deal with the whole matter. Uh, let's see. I want to read some other comments. Sister Sabrina um, Brown said it's important to have patience and stay obedient to the word and don't waver because they are always watching us, wanting, uh, waiting for us to help, waiting for us to slip. And that is definitely true. Um, Brother Aza said game reconnaissance, uh, game spirit, uh, reconnaissance spirit. Uh, maybe we could get that brother to call in or elaborate a little bit. Um, Sister Alicia said, first and foremost, you pray for direction and guidance from the Lord to give you the right words and also for their understanding to be increased and God be glorified. Um, humility, temperance. Uh, let me see. And those fruits are needed. Let's go ahead and go to Brother Bakersman, one of our hosts on the show. My brother, this is the middle of the show. We need your input. We need your advice. And we need that backup scripture, my brother. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Brother Bakers. How you doing? Um, first, I want to say uh, happy Sabbath again. And I uh, want to thank Brother Julius for calling in. And uh, prayers out to you, brother, you and your daughter. Um, well, definitely meeting people where they are is a, it's a big thing because... Coming, coming into this truth is a, uh, it's a blessing, blessing, you know, at, at its most because when you, when it's, you it, it sound like it truth, sound like you wanted to say, brother, it sound like you want to say it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Go ahead, my brother. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's definitely, it's definitely that because Dylan. One thing I've come to realize is. Dealing not with just people, but mostly dealing dealing with your family, it's gonna come a time where you're gonna have to be more humble than you want to be sometimes because these are the people that you you grew up around that you you grew up with, and sometimes it kind of it kind of hurts you you know when you you want to show them you know things that you find out or you want to share with them. And they kind of, you know, they kind of shut you down. And you, you're not expecting this because it, it's family. But this is where the div division is going to come from first. So you have to be well prepared to, you know, accept, you know what I'm saying, that dismissal or accept that rejection that they're going to offer to you. You know, you still love them. And you, you know, like Brother I said, you know, you don't stop dealing with them. It's just the fact that it's like they kind of change up on you in a, in a sense. You know, they look at you like you changed up on them, but in reality, all you did was start reading, and the Most High gave you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this word to wake up, and that's all you're trying to do is share it with them, but they, they're not want to deal with you because of this truth, and that's that's what it does. It it takes people out of your life. And it doesn't it doesn't do it to to break you down or weaken you. It it helps you to see and understand that you are set apart now. And this is this is what's gonna come along with it. Dealing with God and having an understanding of the scripture. So I was reading last night out of uh Proverbs and uh I have uh two a few places I wanna read from uh Proverbs chapter one verses two through seven and Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. So um, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2 through 7. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give stability to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. 
to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark things. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you when you get this understanding of this word, you understand why you must fear. Uh, we got cut off. Let me go ahead and see if I can get my people back on. Um, but for those who are out there, brothers and sisters, um, definitely want to. Uh, let me see. I'm going to do this another way. Um, while we're waiting to get them back on, brothers and sisters, what I want to do is I want to give you a scripture. I'm going to see if it takes long to get them back on. Back on. Let's this see. Let's see if we can get the brother back on. If not, then I can... Uh, brother that's brother bakersman uh let's go ahead and go to sister savannah sister savannah um you may have a personal story or an example of how you dealt with a family member friend or a loved one that was not in the truth and uh, why you are um but nevertheless um give us your comments on today's give thursday us, 9 47 hold on give us your comments on today's um topic which is how do you deal with family, friends, and loved ones who are not in the truth? How do you conduct yourself? How do you carry yourself with them? Go ahead, sis. Hello? Uh, Sister Savannah? Oh, okay, hold on. Unmuted. Sister Savannah? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go to you right now, so you can go ahead and give your feedback as to how you deal with family family member, friends, and loved ones who are um, not in the truth. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to have a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're working it out. How do you deal with... Um, I can't. I can't hear you. Okay, um, go ahead. Give us your feedback, sis. Um, Brother Baker, he he's now been in this well as Brother Julius, Sister Crystal. You know, it all just comes down to, you know, meeting people where they're at. 
um, whatever it is that they're, they're, wherever they are in their life, whatever question they may come to you, you just have to try to find um, some scriptures or a video or a lesson that will help them answer the questions or give them the answer that they're looking for with their questions. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to just dealing with people, especially family members, you know, we just have to just um, give them the word slowly. We can't just listen on them. We can't make people see the truth of um, if God. We have to, like, just slowly, you know, just give it to them piece by piece, a little bit at a time. Um, and, and once they see your walk, they see how dedicated you are to the word, they see how you're living, they see the things that the Lord is doing in your life, that will inspire them. It just it may happen at different times. Um so I just think that everyone that's making different comments about, you know, dealing with family members, everybody's right on point. You know, we can't force people into this truth. They're going to see it one way or another. And all we can do really is plant seeds and let the Lord increase it. Absolutely. I, I, you know, and I appreciate that comment. And, and a lot of people say, well, they ask the question, well, where do you start at? when you're dealing with someone who's not in the truth in order to start to get them to see some things. Well, one of the things I start with, which is simple, which is the months of the year. You know, we celebrate January the 21st. The world does, I should say, as New Year's Day. And then you go and show them that according to the Bible, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it says that the Passover is on the 14th day of the first month at evening. Then you ask them, have we ever celebrated the Passover in January? And they say, well, no. And then you give them something simple like if the word, if the root oct, O-C-T, means eight, then why is October considered to be the 10th month of the year? If every word that begins with D-E-C means 10, decade, decimal point, rounding to the nearest tenth, decathlon, ten races. If every word that begins with D-E-C means ten, then why is December considered to be the twelfth month of the year? And then you can give them, well, January was named after the Roman god Janus, J-A-N-U-S. And they wanted to celebrate the beginning of their new year in commemoration with the god that has two faces, that was looking in the past and in the future. So now let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Let me show you where God celebrates his New Year's at. Then you show him the Passover. Then you say, okay, well, Passover this year is celebrated on April the 6th at sundown. And I'm just jumping. I'm just giving you a date. Uh, I, I, it was, I believe it was the 6th or the 8th this year. Um, then count 14 days before that. And so now you can determine when God's New Year's, New Year's Day is every year based on when the Passover is. Then, oh, man, I, I never looked at it like that. Then I take him, well, how many, how many, um, by what number did Noah take every animal into the ark by? And they say, oh, he took every animal into the ark two by two. Well, let's go to Genesis, the seventh chapter. Let's go ahead and read it. You read it for me. The first and the second second verse. They, they get to the uh, second verse. For every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens. You start, oh, wait a minute. So he didn't take every clean beast two by two. He took, I mean, every beast in the, in, to the R two by two. He took clean animals by sevens. Well, what do they mean clean and unclean? Well, let's go to the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Let me show you that God got a dietary law between what's clean and what's unclean. And then you say, well, you know, some people are going to say, well, God changed that. He said, why, why call that unclean, which I have made clean? Then you take him to Acts the 10th chapter, where it actually says that, where Peter had a vision of clean and unclean things. And then Peter said, no, Lord, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And then you take him back to where it says, thou should not call any man common or unclean, which is only a few more verses down in the same chapter. And then you say, you see, God wasn't talking about food. He was talking about man because he was bringing the Gentiles into the body of Christ. So these are little simple things that you can do to start them off, to open up their eyes and plant their seed. And again, you may not be the one that bring them into the truth, you may be the one who plant the seed. Somebody else will come back behind you and water the seed. Somebody else will come back behind that person and, and, and 
cultivate the seed. And then somebody else will come behind that person and pull, pull the seed out and bring the seed to the truth. So I'm just showing you a few things that you can do, and which is what I do. And to be honest with you and be truthful, me and Brother Julius debated for like 10 years. We started in the late 90s debating with each other. We going back and forth on the word of God. We going back and forth on the truth. But it was one thing that Brother Julius had that I didn't have. have. He knew that word where he could say, well, let me take you here. Ice, read this. Let me take you here. Read that. I had the not I had the knowledge and I was aware, but I didn't have that wisdom and that understanding to actually go to the word itself. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I personally um, went through, brothers and sisters. And I'll read to you in a moment um, a scripture in um, First Corinthians. But before I do that, let me go ahead, go to Sister Crystal. Sister Crystal Wells, and let's get her feedback real quick and her scripture as it relates today to today's subject. Go ahead, um, Sister Crystal. Okay. Um, well, my feedback on this is um, first of all, like we said before, let's just be patient. You gotta have patience and love, and you know you got to have the understanding as well. Um, and when you're talking to people. You got to have some knowledge. You can't just, you know, start talking off the top of your head. You need to know what you're talking about. And if you are not knowledgeable enough to know where to find the map, then, you know, if you're talking and you have a phone, you always can, can look it up as you're talking. Mm -hmm. You can pull it up as you're talking if you don't know where to find it, but never let people know that you don't know what you're talking about because you will lose. Mm -hmm. And they will attack you. So while we're talking, you know, hey, if I don't know where it is, hey, I'm going to put it in and, and look it up. And it's right there and I can keep talking. So, you know, um, that's one thing that I know that you can do. And also, we can't just be a, a listener. We have to also, I mean, we can't just be a doer. We have to listen to the people as well. Mm -hmm. Listen to them, listen to what they have to say, and, you know, then we can go from there, and then we can take them to the right scripture, you know, as to what they are saying, right. because we shouldn't always talk, but we have to listen to, mm -hmm. and uh, so, um, so let's, let's just be, you know, the Lord said we need to be uh, not only a listener, but a doer as well, so that means go research, tell them to go research it, ask questions. And to teach God and ask God to give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of this word, and He will give it to them. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. the main thing is just not want to uh, uh, disencourage someone, but to encourage someone. Right. And the scripture that I wanted to give uh, to um, uh, I also want to do I want to do uh, First Corinthians nine and fourteen. But thou. For though I be free from all men, yes, yet I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain more. That means that, you know, God wants to gain people. He don't want to lose people. And so we just have to be uh, uh, acceptable to where they are and what they have learned because they don't understand, they don't know. And mm -hmm. so it takes us as believers. Uh, to try to show them where they are wrong and what they are doing. We have to do it that way. And also to encourage them to be strong, to, to research, to read your Bible, and to stay focused and, and keep your eyes and seek God. Seek God and He will give you this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And um, I have another scripture. Scripture is said Joshua 1 and 9. Joshua, uh, you and said Joshua 1 and 9? Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wherever thou goest. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read that again. Joshua 1 and 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Mm -hmm. whether, whether so ever thou goest. So just know that God is always with us, and you know, all we have to do is seek him and call on him and ask him for anything. And he will give it to us. But we have to add. And so I just encourage everybody to just, you know, uh, seek the Lord and, you know, be patient with 
with your family and your friends and meet them where they are and just go from there and don't close the door on people. Uh, just try to understand where they are because we were once there too. Right. So uh, we just want to, you know, stay in the faith and be strong and just be patient and, and, and make sure that we have love and understanding. Those two things we need to have when we're trying to do with family and friends about this word. So those are my uh, uh, words that I have, my take on this. And uh, so I can say, you know, I just hope everybody be encouraged. All right. Thank you for that, sister. Um, there was a sister on Facebook Live, uh, Sister Latrice said that um, I should do a lesson on that. We did a lesson called um, um, Planting the Seeds of Salvation, which was actually dealing with that. And I, and, and I probably should bring that lesson back um, because that was a powerful lesson just on what we're talking about today. But I, I do want to read you a few scriptures. And the first scripture that I want to read to you is in the book of 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, it talks about maybe you have a wife that don't believe or you have a husband that don't believe or you have, you know, someone in the household that does not believe, you know, but you are worried about their salvation. You are worried about, um, you know, God, you know, blessing them with his promise, you know, of everlasting life. I want to read this to you. 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, we're going to start at verse 12 and we're going to read to verse 14. It says, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believe not, and she be pleased to do well with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which has a husband that believe not, and if he be pleased to do well with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Elsewhere, your children unclean, but now are they holy? But if the unbelieving depart, um, well, you know, I, I wanted to I wanted to first start with that right there, because the prayer of the believer is powerful, brothers and sisters. OK, the prayer of the believer is powerful enough to help save, not save, but to help save her whole household or his whole household. Now, let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. And we're going to do verses 9. Romans, the 12th chapter. And we're going to uh, start at verse 9. Romans 12, we're going to start at verse 9. And it reads, let love be without dis, uh, uh, dissimul dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejo rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Dis, uh, distributing to the necessary ne necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condense to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil, Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So, brothers and sisters, we don't have to debate. We don't have to judge. We don't have to force what we believe on anyone else. Because there is no one, brothers and sisters... That, and I want to, I want to, I want, I want you to listen to what I'm saying in context, brothers and sisters. There is no one that you yourself can bring to Jesus. I want you to put that in, in, in proper context, what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. I want you to listen to this. This is John the sixth chapter. 
I want you to listen to what Jesus is saying about people coming to him. He said, and this is the father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I shall raise him up again at the last day. So basically, brothers and sisters, what Jesus is saying here is that the father is the one that has to bring them to Jesus. We can plant the seed. We can open up the door. We can share the word of God and, 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 and share that spirit with them. But ultimately, it is the father himself that has to connect with them to inspire them to go to his son, Jesus. We got to do our job. But ultimately, brothers and sisters, we are not the deciding factor in the situation. Verse 44, John 6 and 44. No man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him. I'm going to say that again. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up again at the last day. So again, brothers and sisters, our job is to just share the word and plant the seed. It's not to judge. It's not to criticize. It's not to look at them as if we were always where we are today. We had to get here and it took us a journey to get here. We didn't get here overnight, brothers and sisters. It took us some time to get here. So why don't we be as patient with them as we wanted people to be patient with us when we were in our old lifestyle and in our old way of living and was not ready to change at that time. We just pray that it don't be too late before they change. Let me read another scripture for you. First Corinthians, the third chapter, verses six through eight. It says, I have planted. Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So again, you can plant all you want and you can water all you want, brothers and sisters. But God gives the increase. So let's continue to do our job and let's continue to work um, in accordance to the assignment that God has given us. But again, don't try to do it all. You may be the one that just plant the seed of curiosity. Or someone has already planted the seed of curiosity and your job is to just water the seed that somebody else has already planted. And then somebody else will come along and do the other job, brothers and sisters. So again, don't try to do it all. Give them a little bit at a time because this is a powerful word and it's full of knowledge and light. And you don't want to burn nobody up with this light because you've given them too much at one time. Even Moses had to put a veil over his face because he had shown so much. His light was so bright when he had encountered the God of Israel. That it was too much. So everybody can't handle this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 4. Let me read this for you. Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we not faint. So don't give up, brothers and sisters, and don't be discouraged if you have a husband or wife or a mother or father or children or co-workers that you love that has not accepted this thing yet. It says that we not faint but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the mind of them which believe not. So just as you're working hard, Satan and his fallen angels are working just as hard as you. 
The difference between you and Satan and his fallen angels, you got to sleep at night. You got to go to work. You got to rest. So you don't have 24 hours a day, seven days a week to get into somebody's mind. But Satan and his fallen angels do. But no matter how much time that they have, it's not more powerful than the word of God itself. That's why they need more time to try to get to somebody. Because, see, you can get to somebody with a word or two. If they're ready, if it's their season, if they're ripe, if they're ready to receive this word, if they're in their august season, brothers and sisters. It says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And that's all we're saying, brothers and sisters. I have many family members and friends who are not in the truth or the word of God. And I go live every Tuesday with the Bible Show Truth Hour. Some of them, depending on what they're going through in their life, might tune in and might listen. I share it. I invite them to tune in. I put it in their inbox. Many of them don't watch. It's not time for them yet. But we can still go out. We can still go to a movie. We can still go and eat together. We can still do all the things that we can do together, brothers and sisters. Spend time, visit one another. And we're not talking about the Bible every time we talk. We might talk about sports. We might talk about the coronavirus, we might talk about other things, but if I have a chance and an opportunity, if it presents itself and if it's the right time, then I'll begin again sharing some of the things that are written in the word of God to show them that, okay, maybe you may not understand, but we are right on time with everything that's going on in this world right now. But again, don't force this word on nobody, brothers and sisters. When they're ready for it, just be ready to give it to them when they're ready for it. But let them see the example in you and the walk in you of how good God is. Let them see how peaceful you are and how much you're not shaken. One of the things people always say about me, I don't never see you angry, Black Ice. I don't never see you upset. It's not that I don't get angry and I don't get upset. It's that I'm warring with myself. In the inside, in my own body, in my own soul, within my spirit. And I'm asking God to let what comes out of me be reflective of him and not reflective of my own ego, my own pride, and my own emotion. Because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when you talk about men, you, you got egos and you got pride right there. But I ask God to let what come out of me, even if you say something that offends me, I try not to take it personal because I know that it's not necessarily you, but it's a spirit that got caught up inside of you. And I recognize Satan when I see him, brothers and sisters, whether it's the littlest Facebook or Instagram or social media post. I recognize it. And so I, I, I try not to respond in kind because, see, you can either make things grow or you can kill them on sight. By not even acknowledging it. All Satan wants is acknowledgement. And if you don't acknowledge him, then he can't exist in your world. So don't allow Satan to exist in your world by acknowledging the little things that divide you one from another. And that's my take on today's subject and topic. So let's go ahead. Let's close this thing out. Let's go to brother. Um, let's go to sister Savannah. Um, give us... Um, Give us your closeout, Sister Savannah, on today's subject. Okay, my closeout would be, let me just turn to Romans 15 and 2. Romans 15 and 2? Let every one of us, yes, Romans 15 and 2. Okay. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to education. So basically... We just always want to edify our people, no matter on whatever it is, whether it's um, dealing with work, dealing with love life, dealing with school, dealing with your own personal um, goals. 
just always want to edify whoever's around you, whether and especially when it comes to the Word of God. We don't never want to leave our people um, questioning anything that we're doing. So we always want to be able to just edify them um, and help them to learn exactly what it is that we're doing when it comes to serving the Most High God. Um, and once they understand, the more that they understand what we're doing, the more that they'll be more keen to walking with us and listening to what we have to say and trying to obey what the Word of God says. So that's my take on it today. Uh, Brother Bakersman, give us your close out, my brother. Okay, uh, there you go. my close out uh, for today's show is uh, we always have to remember that uh, dealing, dealing with what we're dealing with right now, with this uh, this truth coming out, um, is remaining humble throughout uh, throughout the chastisement, and you always have to make sure you're paying attention because your family could be your chastisement because mm. nobody can get under your skin better mm. than your family that knows you. So you always have to stay on your toes when you when you're dealing with them because they know if you're trying to you're really trying to you know walk this new walk that that you say you're walking. So they always paying attention. And they're going to do things to, to test you, to, to maybe knock you off track or to, you know, to get you out of character. But you always have to remember that the Most High is always watching you. So uh, the scripture I want to uh, end with is uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. So you always you always have to remember that you're not actually going against the people themselves. You're going against the mindset that they have, mm. because the most high deals with the mindset just as well as faith. So you always have to remember it's not the the physical side of it; it's always the spiritual. And that's my closing. Uh, Sister Crystal Wells, give us your closeout. Um, my closeout is uh, just um, plant your seed, um, just wait for someone to water and let God do the increase. Uh, and sit back and watch, wait for it to grow. Um, if it does not grow, then, you know, it always got to be God's will. He calls us. So that's the reason that we are asking here in this truth is because God has chosen us. So um, we just have to just do our part. And, you know, uh, you can't do it all. So just plant your feet and just move to the next one. And uh, just make sure that we are uh, uh, have knowledge on the things that we are saying to people. And if you come to a place to where you don't understand something that they may bring to you, then you direct them to a brother, someone that can, you know, help them more to understand what it is that they are asking. So don't try to take it on if you are not, you know, have enough understanding about it. Uh, so uh, that's my take on it, and just be uh, in good faith and, you know, just have peace, love for all, and, you know, just love one another and, you know, that is my take for today, and it was a very interesting lesson, and it was very good, and I just thank everybody for coming on and joining us today. We appreciate that, sister, and my closeout is this. Uh, let's go to Colossians, the book of Colossians, the fourth chapter. The book of Colossians, the fourth chapter, verses one through four, um, it says, I'm sorry, one through five, it says, Master, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Withal, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Walk in wisdom toward them 
that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Brothers and sisters, in order for us to do our part in helping to bring people to the truth and bringing people to Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Christ, then we must do our homework. We must be prepared and we must be the example of God in us that we want other people to see so that they will have something to look forward to when you are pulling them to the word, brothers and sisters. And again, be patient and give them time because someone did it for you. We want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to this episode of Reboot Your Faith, hosted by Sister Krista Wells, Sister Savannah, um, Brother Bakersman, and your brother Black Ice. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. Today's topic was, how do we deal with loved ones, family members, friends, Co-workers, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, children, cousins. How do we deal with those who are not in the truth? How do we deal with them? How do we do what we can do to help them to get to the truth? That was our topic and subject for today. If you missed it, go back and watch it. Replay it. Start your watch party. Share. It's been a beautiful um, um, show today. Reboot Your Faith. And remember, next Sabbath day, we have What's the Real Deal Israel, with this, which is our youth radio show. We thank you so much. Tune in this Tuesday to the Bible Show Truth Hour. And uh, we're going to deal with another powerful subject on the Truth Hour this Tuesday. And to then, peace and blessings in Jesus' name.